Here we start with uh, electrolysis of molten compounds continued. After this we'll do the electrolysis of aqueous compounds. Uh, but the first thing you've got to be able to do is differentiate between molten and aqueous systems. We're going to have a look at a molten system now. And the system we're going to look at is molten lead to bromide. Lead to bromide. Now the first thing we have to understand about uh, ionic compounds is that they consist of two types of ions. You have the metal ion, which is always the positive ion, and you have the non-metal ion, which is always the negative ion. So if we could imagine a beaker, we have to give it some heat with lead to bromide on, you'd have positive lead two ions and negative bromide ions. Now you can tell the charge on the lead ion because it's called lead two bromide and bromide ions always have a charge of minus one. So when you represent one of these molten systems you've got to keep the ratio one ion to two bromide ions. You've got to keep the ratio intact. So now let's imagine we put carbon electrodes in here. Now the electrode, an electrode is basically just a bit of rod connected to the cell or battery that goes into the electrolyte. Okay. So these particular ones are made of carbon. Now the carbon rod or the carbon electrode connected to the cell, the positive side of the cell, is known as the anode and the one connected to the negative side of the cell is called the cathode. Now this electrode here, the anode, is positively charged and the negative ions will migrate to the positive anode and the positive metal ions will migrate to the cathode. So the Br- ions go to the anode and I think we've said this before, they're called anions and the lead 2 ions go to the cathode and they're known as cations. Now for a more detailed look at what goes on when they get there and hence what's discharged during electrolysis. Let's have a look at the cathode first. Let's draw the cell up here. This is the cathode. Now the job of the cell is to push electrons onto the cathode here. So this is electron rich, making it negatively charged and hence the PB ions will migrate towards this. Once they hit the cathode, electrons from the cathode will come off the cathode and go onto the ion and then the iron will go back to being an atom. Okay, this chose, sorry, this process is known as being discharged. Now the reason we call it discharged is because here it's charged and it becomes uncharged and that process is known as discharge. Now the cell equation or the cell half equation okay, just simply explains this process. Pb2 plus here gains two electrons to become Pb. And this is a lead ion, this becomes a lead atom. Okay, so we say the product at the cathode is lead metal. Whatever the metal ion being discharged, it will always gain enough electrons to be discharged. So if the charge is plus one, it will gain one electron. If the, uh, if the charge is plus two, it will gain two electrons. If it's plus three, it will gain three electrons. And there you go. In this case it's plus two, so it gains two electrons. So lead is formed at the cathode. <coughs> at the anode, what happens at the anode? Well, the job of the cell here is to take electrons from the anode, which is positively charged, and it takes electrons off of the anode. So here we are, we have a bromide ion here. 
it will touch the anode and the extra electron that the bromide ion has goes on to the electrode. The electrons then go on to the anode and go off up here into what we call the external circuit around the external circuit through perhaps a bowl and they go onto the cathode making it negative. So electrons always go around this way. This top part of the diagram is known as the external circuit. The bit here with all the ions and stuff is therefore known as the internal circuit. Okay, so as we've said, the bromide ions go to the anode and their electrons come off of them. So they, again, they start off as bromide ions, okay, and they become bromine atoms. And again, that's known as discharge. Now, the equation for this is a bromide ion becomes a bromine atom and it loses its electron. We don't put, um, we don't, what we don't say is, and this is very common, some textbooks say this, we say bromide ion minus an electron becomes a bromine atom. This representation treats the arrow here as an equal sign and it isn't like that, it's a process, this becomes this, not this side equals this side, that's wrong. Okay, so the bromide ion becomes a bromine atom and an electron. Now as you all know, what happens then is one bromine atom and another bromine atom will come together because it's diatomic and we'll end up with uh, Br2. So what we say is this, we say two of these guys form a molecule and two electrons. So the product at the anode is bromine. Okay, and what we've performed there is electrolysis and what that means is splitting up a compound using electricity. Okay, on the next one I'll do some more examples of electrolysis of molten systems.